Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at a CPA simulation that deals with auditing and attestation. In this simulation, it's going to be coming from the AICPA.org website, from the original source. And the AICPA.org, they do have a sample a simulation and sample multiple choice to get you familiar, to get you comfortable with, this, with the software on the exam day. So I strongly suggest you go there, take a look at those and practice them. But this simulation, what I, why I like this simulation, it's because it's a true illustration why you should take FAR first, FAR before audit. Although I'm, I'm, I'm advising you against what I did. I took auditing first and I, I had my own reasons. If you have a good reasons, why not? But I strongly suggest you take FAR first and you're going to see why as I'm going to be illustrating the concept in this simulation. So if you are studying for the CPA exam, definitely go to the AI CPA website. And if you need additional resources, farhatlectures.com, I'm sure you do have a CPA review course, which is great. You need to have a CPA review course. Farhat Lectures is a useful addition. It's a supplemental tool to your CPA review course. I can help you understand your CPA review course better, which in turn will add 10 to 15 points to your CPA exam score. And this is what you want. You want to get the above 75 and move on with your life and move on with your career. Your risk is one month of subscription with me. Your potential gain is passing the exam. Are you willing to take simply that risk? And if not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well your university doing on the CPA exam. I do have resources for other colleges, for other college courses as well, auditing, tax, so on and so forth. If you haven't connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Like this recording, share it with others. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and please Reddit as well. Please connect with me on Reddit. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go to the AICPA website and start to take a look at the simulation step by step. So this is what the screen would look like. It looks like the actual exam. So you are comfortable when you are doing this. That's the good part about practicing those simulation. Go to the AI CPA website and get comfortable as much as possible because on the exam day, you want to walk in and you don't want any surprises. You want to act as you are pretty comfortable. And the more comfortable you are, the more you can devote to the, to the test itself. And this is how you will pass the exam. The first thing is read the instruction. Scroll down to complete all parts of this of this task. That's fine. We are going definitely. We are going to do that um, during during the course of year two audit of Chester Company. The auditor discovered potential cutoff problem that may or may not require adjusting entries. So notice they are asking for adjusting entries. And if you don't understand or if you have not learned your adjusting entries from financial accounting from FAR exam, then you might have difficulty with this simulation. Otherwise, if you know your financial accounting, I would say this is an easy peasy simulation. Okay. For each of the potential cutoff problems, indicate below the required journal entry. To prepare each required journal entry, click on the cell in the account name. For example, on the exam day, you should not be reading those. You should know that there is, you know, in the, in the, in the cells, there is, you can find the account name. Enter the corresponding debit and credit in the associate column. All amount will be automatically rounded to the nearest dollar. Not all rows in the table might be needed to complete each journal entry because, for example, you may need two accounts, but they may give you more because they don't want to tell you. They don't want to tell you how many accounts are needed. If no journal entry is needed, check no journal entry box at the top of the table as your response. So if there's no journal entry, in other words, there is no problem with this transaction, then guess what? There is no problem with this transaction. So let's take a look at this first problem or the first scenario. Basically, this scenario, this is basically, this could be a multiple choice. Now they're, they turn it into a simulation. So that's, I always say that simulations are no more than a multiple choice stated differently. That's all what's to it. And I can take even this simulation, only this scenario, and even make it more complicated. Not more complicated. I will show you how I would turn it into uh, basically a little bit more challenging scenario. Okay, the company shipped merchandise with a carrying amount of 75,000 FOB destination on December 23rd, year two, and recorded the sale and the relief of inventory on that date. So this is a statement. You have to understand what you are told. We shipped the merchandise, the carrying amount was 75,000, and we recorded the sale and the relief of the information. So we said, okay, we made the sale, and it's FOB destination. Now you have to understand what FOB destination means. FOB destination means the product is ours. So really the product will be ours until it's received by the buyer. Until we get there, until we deliver it, it's our, it's our inventory. It's not their inventory. Okay. 
The customer received the merchandise on December 31st, year two. The merchandise has a gross profit margin of 10%. Record the necessary journal, uh, record the necessary year two adjustment, if any, if any. So what are we saying here? Well, here what they did, they shipped it, okay? They shipped it and notice what they did and they recorded the sale and they removed the inventory on December 23rd, okay? Technically, at this point, this statement alone, technically, this sale did not take place on December 23rd, year two, because the merchandise did not arrive yet. So technically, they shouldn't have recorded the sale. However, the customer did receive the merchandise on December 31st, year two. Guess what? Then for year two, we did the right thing. Now, the, the entry should have been done on December 31st, year two, but it doesn't matter. For year end, for year end, we recorded the sale and we recorded the the removal of the inventory. So we shouldn't have recorded it on December 31st, uh, on December 23rd year two. We should have waited till December 31st. But that's fine. It's in year two anyway. Now, if this, if the customer did not receive the merchandise till January 1st year three, then we would have to reverse the entry, take it out. It wasn't really a sale and we could not re remove the inventory as of yet. So what does that mean overall? It means no entry is required for this problem. No entry is required. Why? Because we the sale took place in year two, although we made a minor mistake, but we did record the entry overall in the same year. So again, here you, you need to know what's FOB destination. And you need to know if you needed to reverse the entry, what would happen? Well, let's take a look at the second scenario here. The company shipped merchandise with a carrying amount of 45,000 to a co-signee on December 24th, year two, and recorded the sale and the relief of the inventory on that date. Okay, now here what you need to know is you need to know what does it mean when you sell, pro when you ship product to co-signee. Co when you ship product to co-signee, it's not really a sale. All what you are doing is telling the co-signee to sell it for you. So it's not really a sale, you're just removing the inventory, not removing the inventory, you are transporting the inventory from your place of business to their place of business in the hope that they can sell it, but it's still your inventory. The consignee has not sold the merchandise as of January 5th, year three. So notice they're telling us here, even by year three, which is the following year, January 5th, five days into the year, they haven't sold it. The merchandise has a gross profit margin of 10%. Record the necessary journal entry for year two if needed. Okay, so what they did in year two, they did ship it to a consignee and they recorded the sale and the relief of the inventory. So they treated the shipment as they actually shipped it. Well, is this really true? Not really, they did not really, as if they really sold it. Not really, they shipped it, yes, they, they but transferring, the mere transfer of the inventory to the consignee is not really a sale until that, until they actually sell it. So what did they do? So what's important here is you understand if they recorded the sale, how did they record the sale? So if you don't know how to do this, I'm going to show you what, what they did to record the sale. So let me just go ahead, snip this, and let's work with it. So here's what they did. On their books, when they did this, well, they said, we have an account receivable, we have a sales, and what they did, they debited cost of goods sold and they credited inventory. So this is what they did. And they're telling us here that the inventory was 45,000. Therefore, we debited cost of goods sold 45,000. We credited inventory 45,000. They're not, they're not telling us what is the sale? What's the sale? What's the selling price? But they told us the gross profit margin is 10%. All that you have to do here, and hopefully you know how to do this. If you take, let me get my calculator. You will take 45,000 mine uh, divided by one minus 10%, which is 0 0.9. And that's going to give us 50,000. Therefore, the sale, why, why 0 0.9? Because one minus 0 0.1 equal to 90%. So you'll take 45,000. You have to be careful. You, you want to make sure you're comfortable with this. Gives you 50,000. Okay. Simply put, you make, you make 10% profit, uh, uh, a gross profit on the sale. Okay. So the sale was 50,000. And this is a basic journal entry, recording a sale using a perpetual inventory system. Now, this entry is incorrect. Whoops, this entry is incorrect. What do we do to fix this entry? We have, to, we have to reverse everything. We have to reverse the entry that I just made a second earlier. Therefore, what I'm gonna do with sales, I had credit sales, basically I have 
basically I have to remove the inventory. I have to debit sales and credit account receivable 50,000. Now also I have to put the inventory back because I didn't really sell it as of year two. I have to put the inventory back 45,000 and remove my cost of goods sold remove the cost of goods sold that I that I recorded of 45,000 again notice here you need your knowledge from financial accounting this is this is where this is why it's critical to know your financial accounting be comfortable take far before you take audit okay let's take a look at the third scenario at the beginning of year two and by the way this is how I can help you. This is how Farhat Lectures help. I can help you understand these journal entries. I don't assume that you know them. I teach you those journal entries at farhatlectures.com. Okay, at the beginning of year two, the company entered into a three-year contract to provide services at $30 per year. So they, ent they enter into the contract. The contract was 90000 and services will provide it continuously over three-year period. That's fine. The contract was paid in full. That's great year two so they paid us the amount in full and the company recorded ninety thousand dollar as revenue on that date all right so what happened is this uh, is this first of all did they do the right thing and the answer is no they did not they should they could not they should not have recorded the ninety thousand immediately as revenue okay they did receive the money that's fine but for year two, they did not really earn 90000 This 90000 has to be earned over a period of three years. So here's what they did. I'm going to put the entry here, although this is the correct, the incorrect entry. This is what they did. They debited cash, which they should debit cash, but that's not what they're asking you. Okay, they're asking you. Now, let me just, I don't want to confuse anyone. Let me just do the entry of what they did. So this way, I don't, I don't want to give you the impression that this is what they should enter here. So let me just snip this. So this is what they did. You shouldn't you shouldn't do this, but this is what they did. They debited cash, ninety thousand, and they credited revenue ninety thousand. This is what they did, which is we already agree that's incorrect because the ninety thousand is for three years. So it's thirty k, thirty k, and thirty k. So what do we have to do? Well, for year one, for this year, they should only have revenue of not 90 they should only have a revenue of 30. therefore what's going to happen to fix this entry we're going to have to debit revenue of uh debit revenue we have to remove the revenue out we have to remove out sixty thousand. we have to remove sixty thousand out of revenue we don't touch cash cash is good cash we received the cash now we debited revenue what do we need to do now we have to debit the revenue and put that 60,000 someplace else. Where do we put it? In some sort of unearned revenue or liability. So on the exam, I'm not really sure what we have. It's either gonna be unearned revenue or some sort of a liability, uh, some sort of a liability account. Okay, let's see what let's see what we have. So to fix this problem, let me just go back to the simulation itself. I'm gonna debit. I know I'm gonna have to debit revenue 60,000, so my revenue is only 30,000, so that's 60,000. Now I'm going to have to credit this, the remaining 60,000 as a liability, not accrued liability. Uh, could be contract. Let's see if there's unearned. No, it's a contract. It's a contract liability. So there's a contract liability remaining of 60,000. 60,000. Okay. What I did is I reduced my revenue by 60,000 and turned that revenue into liability because I have to perform in the next two years. Now, in the next two years, what I do, I'm going to do it here, but you're not being asked to do so. Please, this is, I'm going above and beyond this. You will debit contract liability. Where's contract liability? I guess once you use it, you can no longer use it. Okay. But what you do is you debit contract liability 30,000, credit service revenue 30,000, year two, and year three, debit contract revenue 30,000, credit revenue 30,000. So you would record the revenue over the period of two years. Again, I hope this simulation helped you understand how you would approach these simulations. Again, uh, let me make it a more complicated simulation just to show you that it's the same thing as a multiple choice or it can be even harder 
simulation. Rather than giving you the statement, the company shipped merchandise with a carrying amount of 75,000, I can give you shipping document. I can give you shipping document showing that they shipped, shipped it FOB destination without me saying FOB destination. So you have to look at the document, inspect what we, what we sold in this. And I can tell you, for example, the company policy, I'll have a company policy telling you that the merchandise has a gross profit of 10%. I can do that too. So I'll have two documents, one for the shipping and one for the company policy. So it becomes a more challenging because now you're looking at documents but you're looking at the same information or i can take this okay and give you four option journal entries turn this into a multiple choice I'll say, okay is the answer a do we debit this or do we credit this or no entry and you would say okay if you understand it no entry so this could be a multiple choice this could be like straightforward journal entry simulation or this this should be a document review where i can give you documents and you have to review the document simulation so so notice the concept is the same it's tested differently i cannot emphasize this enough because many students they ask me how do i prepare for the cpa simulation well you don't prepare for the CPA simulation independently or separately from your multiple choice. It's all the same concept. Once you understand the concept, that's the first thing. Then you will prepare as many CPA simulations as possible. Now, I don't have CPA simulations for my, <laughs> I don't provide you with this. I have exercises, which is I have exercises like this. Those are simulations, but I don't have simulations like this one. Like you go to the AI CPA, you, you, you use your CPA review course. Uh, if need, buy additional CPA simulations until you are comfortable. But before you do all of this, you want to understand the material. And I can help you understand the material. Far hat lectures, I help you understand the material. I don't have CPA simulations as, as they have them on the exam or the drop down boxes. I don't know, maybe one day I will, but now I don't, but I can help you understand the material. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.